Hello, my name is Rebecca Dorr. I am a senior research associate at the Crane Center for Early Childhood Research and Policy at The Ohio State University. Today I'm going to be talking about this recent article with my collaborators Kelly Pertel and Laura Justice. The COVID-19 pandemic led to school closings beginning in March 2020. In our state of Ohio, the governor ordered closure of schools on March 12th, followed by stay-at-home orders, which led to temporary closure of most early child care centers and many businesses. With children at home, caregivers had to manage increased child care obligations in addition to their regular responsibilities. Reports quickly emerged of increased media use among young children, and popular media reflected parents' concerns about this shift and questions about what constitutes too much screen time. Increased media use may be particularly concerning for children from low-income homes who had higher levels of media use even before the pandemic. So in this study, we set out to address three research questions. How much media use were kindergartners from low-income backgrounds experiencing during the COVID-19 shutdowns? Second, how did the purposes for which kindergartners from low-income backgrounds use media change during shutdowns? And three, how are family and child factors related to children's media experiences during this time? We uh, used a sample from a larger study of 151 caregivers of kindergartners from a racially and ethnically diverse sample of families from low-income households. Data was collected via online questionnaires as part of the larger study in May and June of 2020. We found that average weekly media use for these kindergartners was 46.3 hours a week or 6.6 hours per day. We also found counter to prior research that weekday media use was higher than weekend media use, which may suggest that media use was replacing time that children would otherwise be spending in preschool or other childcare settings. We also wondered whether media use was mostly um, attributable to remote schooling opportunities. But we found that most of the children in our sample um, had direct contact with their teachers once a week or less, with over half of these children um, reported to have no direct contact with their teachers, suggesting that remote schooling is unlikely to account for a significant portion of children's reported media use. We asked parents about the purposes for which their children were using media during this time, and more than half of caregivers reported an increase in media use for learning during the pandemic. Many also reported increases for the purposes of occupying the child's time while caregivers were busy with other tasks, for entertainment, for maintaining relationships with remote family and friends outside the home, and for family bonding. Media was also reported to be helpful in every category that reported increased use. In terms of child and family factors, we found that having more children in the household was related to higher media use, but that number of adults was not related to overall media use, and neither number of children nor number of adults was related to the purposes for which children were reported to use media. We found no difference between boys and girls on overall media use, but we found that girls were more likely to use media for maintaining relationships with family and friends outside the home, and caregivers of girls were more likely to report that media was helpful for this purpose. These findings provide reason for both concern and optimism for the impacts of pandemic closures on low-income children. Caregivers reported increased child media use for positive purposes like education and social interaction, but also useful but less socially valued tasks like occupying the child's time while caregivers were busy. These diverse purposes for media use suggest that caregivers relied on media to supplement children's academic and social growth at a time when school and socializing were not safe in their typical forms. <laughs> 